This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. The primary season is now moving into a really exciting phase, primary elections. Each week between February and June will bring new elections and new surprises as the results of previous weeks weigh in on polling data for the upcoming contests. The broad field of candidates will be rapidly reduced to the politically fittest in each party, the nominees. The nomination process is a most Darwinian affair, which is worth a few roasted opinions. The Republican nomination features a total of 2,552 delegates at the convention. Those delegates come from the states, territories, and the District of Columbia via primary elections. The delegate count does vary a little from election to election, as the GOP assigns bonus delegates to states which have Republican governors, Republican majorities in their state legislatures, Republicans totaling at least half of the delegation to the House of Representatives, Republican senators, and for casting a majority of votes in the Electoral College for the Republican nominee in the last presidential election. This year, those bonus delegates total 519 and add a little more weight to states which are a little redder on the political map. The presumptive GOP nominee is Donald Trump. He is facing a minor primary challenge from a handful of candidates, but after the Iowa GOP caucus returned higher than 97% support for the president, only one challenger so far has scored a single delegate besides Trump. So it will be Trump without some sort of surprise before the convention in August. And by surprise, I mean something which eliminates Trump as a viable candidate, like another impeachment which successfully removes him from office. To be honest, without extraordinary proof of criminal acts, I don't see that happening. A sudden health crisis is more likely, but still quite remote. The Democratic nomination features 4,750 delegates in their convention in 2020. Like the GOP, the Democratic Party apportions delegates based on the delegate count in the Electoral College and has mechanisms to assign bonus delegates to states which are a little bluer on the political map. Unlike the GOP, though, the Democratic Convention has superdelegates. A superdelegate is either an elected official, a party official, or a party activist. The superdelegates will refrain from casting votes in the first round of nomination voting. In the second and subsequent rounds, though, the leaders of the Democratic Party will add their votes. That's interesting, because superdelegates are not bound by the popular vote of the states. In 2016, the superdelegates announced their support for Hillary Clinton practically before primary voting began. That resulted in an insurmountable advantage for Clinton over Bernie Sanders. There were other efforts to make sure that Sanders didn't win the nomination away from Clinton, including some hijinks by Debbie Wasserman Schultz. But let's just pretend for the moment that the only unfair advantage given to Hillary Clinton was the superdelegates announcing that they were with her. Because of that advantage and the public perception that the Democratic Party had picked their nominee before the rank-and-file Democrats had cast their votes, the DNC changed their rules to exclude superdelegates from the first round of voting at the convention. As if that will fix the problem of having superdelegates unbound by the will of the Democratic primary voters casting votes on the nominee. Bernie Sanders will probably have to win on the first ballot if he wants to win at all. Now, the presumptive nominee before voting was Joe Biden because of his popularity in the national polls. It looks like someone forgot to tell Iowa that, though, because Biden came in fourth place. That's pulling down his polling numbers as Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg, the top vote-getters in Iowa, jumped up. You see, because primary elections happen sequentially instead of on a national primary day, the process vets out less viable candidates before they appear on ballots in every state. What I watch for is when a candidate skips making appearances in a state, especially after underperforming in the previous round. Biden is taking time off from campaign appearances in New Hampshire, where he's not really expected to do well due to Sanders and Elizabeth Warren both being from neighboring states. He's also reallocating advertising to focus on specific upcoming primaries. 
and he has been for a while. That suggests that he is not going to make it through the primary season. Without a significantly overwhelming win in South Carolina, Biden is done. Amy Klobuchar actually finished close behind Biden, an outstanding finish considering her competition and the fact that no one outside of Minnesota really knew who Klobuchar was before she announced her candidacy. She likely doesn't stand a chance in the upcoming primaries due to the downward spiral common to finishing below third in the Iowa caucuses. But she could still hang in for a few rounds and possibly get a bounce past Biden in New Hampshire. Elizabeth Warren has collected more support from those who believe that the country's problems would all be solved by the first woman elected president. Unfortunately for her, she's also vying with Sanders for the progressive vote and coming in second to him. She will probably outlast Joe Biden and might wind up with a decent cabinet position offered to her in exchange for her support. She might even get the VP nod. But without a major shift in the campaign, she likely won't be a candidate after Super Tuesday. The wonderkind of the Iowa caucuses was Pete Buttigieg, the almost too young to run candidate with the difficult to pronounce last name actually won the Iowa Democratic caucuses, albeit because his support came more from rural counties than the support for Bernie Sanders did. That's right, folks. The Iowa caucuses allocate delegates in much the same way that the Electoral College does. Bernie won the popular vote by 43,671 to 37,557 and came in second by two delegates because college students caucus in the more populous counties in Iowa where the delegates individually represent more voters. I can just hear the screams of frustration from those who want to abolish the Electoral College. Now Bernie Sanders is really energizing the Democratic electorate. There's really only one problem with Sanders as far as the leaders of the Democratic Party are concerned. He's not actually a Democrat. Sanders is a self-proclaimed Democratic Socialist who runs as an independent when seeking re-election to his Senate seat. Sure, he canvasses with the Democrats in the Senate, but the Democratic Party leadership certainly don't want for him to be the nominee from their party. They never have and have taken steps before to prevent his nomination. Bernie's supporters know this, and every time something hinky happens that might negatively impact Bernie's campaign, it drives the wedge into the cracks just a bit further. Bernie will likely become the Democratic nominee this time, and that may just fracture the Democratic Party. Meanwhile, Trump's numbers keep improving. I leave it to you to predict who will be inaugurated in January of 2021.